And welcome to the edition of our show. Money means business, as you always say, and business means money, stability, and business, and a lot more, actually, that we learned uh, uh, under uh, uh, circumstances like the pandemic mean a lot and affect the economies, actually, um, well, whether um, positively or negatively. And this is what we found out with uh, the COVID 19 pandemic that affected all economies of the world. And um, uh, fortunately enough for Egypt, uh, the, um, uh, the financial institutions uh, praised the uh, performance of the Egyptian economy and uh, uh, expect uh, a boost in the Egyptian economy despite the circumstances of the COVID-19 pandemic and its effects on the Egyptian economy. But uh, uh, the Egyptian economy is doing well and a lot of work and performance is really uh, good uh, and uh, there would be a boost as expected hopefully uh, for uh, the uh, year 2021 20, uh, that is going to be uh, really uh, doing better uh, than before and this is what we're expecting and this is what we're praying for and hoping definitely a lot has been happening actually as we say week on week uh, in um, the um, economy uh, in the performance of the economy on the projects that are taking place and are being uh, executed uh, here in Egypt uh, we've got important uh, um, uh, events taking place. We've got uh, President Sisi meeting with uh, um, the uh, uh, chairman of uh, the, um, the bank, Tariq um, Aymer, the central bank, and we've got also the President uh, Sisi's meeting with the presidential advisor for uh, development uh, projects and with the presidential advisor of uh, financial affairs and uh, the president of uh, the bank, the central bank of Egypt, Tariq Aymer, uh, concerning the universities. Uh, and uh, we do have uh, uh, online with us uh, uh, Mr. Ayub Mahmoud Ayub, uh, former minister of uh, uh, trade commissioner. Hello, sir. Welcome with us here. Hello? Hello? Mr. Ayub? Hello? Hello, Mr. Ayub? Well, um, well this, uh, we'll just uh, connect again with Mr. Ayub uh, um, in a short while. Um, and of course, you know, the big, the, the, we talked about education, education of uh, taking care of education, then training and all that, and taking care of different education, vocational education, that is very important and a lot uh, more, of course, uh, uh, well, modern technology, technical education, and uh, this is uh, in order to uh, uh, meet all the needs uh, of local needs, the Middle Eastern needs, international needs, uh, and of course, you know, what uh, the market here um, needs, and of course, to be educated and uh, um, well, trained uh, according to the highest uh, international standards and uh, state-of-the-art um, techniques, of course. And uh, President Sisi uh, actually directed uh, uh, the uh, different, uh, and, and they just talked about the different uh, universities presenting that uh, education and stressing the importance of that and taking care of the different universities, universities that will provide that education uh, for those uh, students who are going to be um, going there and uh, I think that also will be just um, we will just have a, uh, there is a change of the frame uh, of mind of uh, different people about vocational training and, and more and we'll talk more about that and we do have online Mr. Ayub uh, Mahmoud Ayub former Minister of Trade Commissioner welcome sir with us Good evening, it's yours, it's yours. Good evening sir uh, it's always a pleasure having you with us Good evening. Good evening. Uh, sir, there is a lot uh, that has been happening. Let me just start again with, uh, um, if we talk about financial, uh, the, uh, the uh, foreign direct investment, sorry, foreign direct investment file is being transferred to be under um, the, uh, the, the responsibility of the Prime Minister directly. How does that affect foreign direct investments in Egypt? Would that be um, kind of, um, uh, you know, would be very helpful for the, uh, for the financial, uh, for the foreign direct investments in Egypt here? Yes, it be. Why do we say that? Foreign investors, when they come to a big market like Egypt, I, when I speak about Egypt, 
about, speak about one, more than 100 million consumers. Yeah. When they come to a, to a market, a big market like that, they want to be sure about the return, the stability, and the infrastructure available in this market. I, I will say a market, not a country in this sense. Foreign investors will be able to the mortgage and financial institutions and the IMF and World Bank. What do they say about the Egyptian market or the Egyptian economy? When they see positive signals or green light from the IMF or from World Bank and from other institutions regarding the uh, like Moody's and so on, they are sure that they are going to invest in a strong economy booming economy, and all economic indicators which we have are positive ones. The word positive is very important to watch in this situation, because in mo most of the economies, big economies of the world, are with the minus. The, the growth rate is with the minus. But the Egyptian economy during the last year, 2020, has been with 2.8% growth. Yes. This is phenomenal as far as the emerging economies is concerned. This is one thing. Other thing, when there is a political stability, economic stability, and security situation is very well, this encourages would-be investors to come to invest and to explore areas of, uh, I say, profit. Because the Egyptian market is a profitable market for any would-be investors and for the uh, the Arab investors and foreign investors alike, they come here, they come to Egypt to see the sectors which need investment. The government by itself has issued a, a liberal investment law which a couple of years ago, which encourages would-be investors to come, establish a presence, bring their money, and transfer of technology to the Egyptian market. Mm -hmm. What is happening now in that? We see that the foreign investors are coming. The Modi's and other uh, other organizations are giving a very good signs or positive ones about the Egyptian economy. The IMF itself is supporting the Egyptian economy to balance itself uh, to face the COVID uh, the COVID COVID nineteen. Yes. All these indicators help the would be investor to explore. Yeah. When we say the explore, explore your market. The government by itself is making it far easier for the investor to come. Clear laws, well, that's very good, liberal laws, and stable economy, and also st a stable legal system which enables them to know beforehand how much it will cost him to reach the customer, how yeah. much it will cost him to produce a certain product or commodity to this market and in this way, he'll be able to to judge the profit margin which he is going to have in the Egyptian market. This is one thing which is very important. When we look to the several sectors of the Egyptian economy, for example, the foreign trade. The foreign trade in the 2020 and 2019 has been booming or increasing, although most of the economies around Egypt are the, the, the foreign trade is coming down because of the COVID and its repercussions. This is one thing. Mm -hmm. Other thing is that the foreign exchange reserves of Egypt is vo more than $44 billion now. This covers more than half of the imports of Egypt, of Egypt more than half of, of Egypt, uh, of the imports of, to, to Egypt. This is another consideration. A third consideration, stability in the labor market. Now the labor is able to know beforehand that what he is going to gain, what he is going to do, and what are his legal obligations to the foreign investor. This makes it easier for the investor to come and invest. Yes. A, a, a fourth dimension or fifth dimension is fifth dimension is just, uh, this, the legal framework for establishing presence in the Egyptian market enables, it makes it easy, cost effective, and uh, and uh, uh, as far as time is concerned, it is in a very limited time you can establish a presence in the a legal presence. I, I I I say in the Egyptian market and we'll find land reclamation or the the power. These are the uh, the 
sectors which are necessary for Egypt now, power system, power system, uh, infrastructure, land reclamation, water conservation, water yeah. desalinization. These are very important sectors in which Egypt is keen to, accept, to expand be, because we have to face what is happening around us and we have to be pragmatic <laughs> approach as far as would-be investors are concerned. When I say would-be investors, it is not confined to the foreign investors, but it is also stretched to Arab investors and also local investors. When they see that they are know the procedure very well, they know the profit margin, and they, it is a cost-effective way to establish new products and expand the, the, the project which you already have. Yes. This is the one thing which is very important for us. Yes, please. Well, uh, Mr. Uh, Mahmoud Ayub, thank you very much for being with us. It's always a pleasure having you. And uh, we are back again, uh, um, and I'd like to introduce my guest for tonight, and uh, that's Dr. Saeed al uh the uh, Professor of uh, Management at Shams University, also Chairman of uh, the uh, Promotional uh, Committee of High Supreme Council of Universities. Welcome, sir, with us. Again, always a pleasure having you Please with us mind. here. We have a lot to talk about, actually. But uh, we'll go for a short break, after which we'll be back and we'll start our talk. Stay tuned to us. Don't go away. We're back again to my year's business, and we have our guests with us, uh, Dr. Saeed Khoudi, Professor of Management at Shams University, and uh, the Chairman of the Promotion Committee of the High uh, uh, Supreme Council of Universities. And welcome, sir, again. Thank you. Uh, sir, there is a lot, you know, that has been happening, and every day there is something new happening, and a lot happening quickly, you know, changing the face of Egypt. Uh, well, we had Muhammad Ali, uh, uh, the great, uh, the founder of modern Egypt, and now we know like there is again modernizing Egypt, and it's high time to do it and change all the the, the, the bad things to the good ones. Well, um, the President Sisi had very important meetings with the President of uh, the Central Bank, Tariq Aymer, and also uh, uh, another. Uh, a very important meeting, President Sisi, with the uh, President, uh, adv Presidential Advisor for Development Projects and the Presidential Advisor for Financial Affairs, and also Mr. Tariq Aymer, uh, the uh, President of the Central Bank. And uh, the, the importance also here, and then the, the, t the main topic was 
uh, the different universities, vocational universities, and of course technical, technical uh, education, uh, technological education according to the state of the art and whatever is the highest standards that um, the, the students going there will receive. How do you see that? Uh, let's begin from where you, uh, you finish, where you said Muhammad Ali. Yes. Uh, President Sisi is a door. Door, it means he's not talking, he's mm -hmm. doing, and he's been doing a lot for uh, Egyptian people uh, in terms of industry, in terms of agriculture, uh, in terms of infrastructure of our mm -hmm. roads and tunnel and so on. Now the focus, according to the new budget for 2021, uh, the focus now is on education, number one, and health care of, uh, of Egyptian people and uh, to have a full coverage by year 2030 for all Egyptian people uh, for, to ensure uh, the health for all Egyptian people. Mm -hmm. Talking about university, is, is the idea is not just opening new building and new university. Exactly. No. Yeah. Uh, President Sisi, if you remember, uh, a couple of years ago, he mentioned we are focusing on the fourth industrial revolution. Yeah. We are focusing on renewable energy and so on. Uh, so the focus should be for the university, not the traditional approach for education, mm. but for new creative and innovative way. Uh, also, he focusing on a uh, high tech university, technological university, uh, vocational uh, training for, uh, for example, community college and so on, uh, to be able to introduce for the Egyptian industry and agriculture and so on, new means in order to uh, be more efficient and effective yeah. in the future. So uh, it is not the issue of opening uh, X number of university, no, the type of university, the focus of new educational level for our uh, population, it's very important mm -hmm. where he focus in technological schools and in deep in his mind, the force revolution and renewable energy, that is a new line of education worldwide. And also, uh, not just uh, education, but how to translate uh, this uh, uh, teaching method and so on, in terms to be able to uh, apply the concept of made in Egypt. Yes. Made in Egypt is very important. Uh, and most of the, uh, you, uh, through your interview with your guest before, for attracting foreign direct investment. Yeah. He focused in certain area of foreign direct investment mm -hmm. to bring the new technology. And that's what we call it as a strategic alliance in order to improve the efficiency and the effectiveness of our industrial and agriculture sector in the future. Well, you know, let me add also something, you know, like uh, for uh, foreign direct investments and all that, uh, there were some stumbling blocks. Like, you know, not, not one ministry is uh, in control of that. There are different ministries doing this. They have to be working together. Uh, like, that, you know, if you know, talk about the land, uh, for example, that an investor is taking or, you know, other places. But right now, you know, under the uh, supervision of the prime minister himself, um, that could be also, um, well, a way to solve this uh, uh, issue of, you know, like, you know, having all working together and uh, um, that would be lessening the trouble that uh, the, the, the investor would be meeting um, in, in coming and, you know, in his own, the process of investing here. Absolutely. That is a good news, of course, uh, to have all the power of making decision for the prime minister of Egypt to handle foreign direct investment, that's a good plus. Remember, we, in the last few years, the last six years, we have a very uh, uh, good uh, indicators worldwide about our infrastructure in terms of roads and the uh, highways and uh, yeah. tunnels and so on. We had a surplus in terms of energy right now. Uh, well, we had uh, a shortage of, of energy for some time, you know. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, yeah, in the we bad years. Forget, we will forget. A few years ago, we used to have a uh, power Outages, shortage yes. uh, for hours, every, in a daily basis. Yeah. Uh, but now we don't have that. And that people start to, you know, forget the... Well, let me just, you know, like, yeah, when, when we were talking about before that, you know, ah. uh, you know like when, when we talk and they say, well, uh, well, you know, we, they should 
focus on education. Well, there are school, different schools. There is like very specialized universities now, and there is a, a very important stress on that. Well, uh, they should do it. You know, like well, we should have uh, uh, something like you know, like the the uh, uh, let's say medically speaking. Well, we do have this every time. You know, there is someone coming up with something, and there is an answer. You know, like you know, people would like to criticize all the time. Well, you know, where is the money going? Well, the money is going in this project. Where is the money coming from? You know, you Absolutely. know, all the time it's like going like this. Exactly. We had outages. We had problems before. We always say when there is someone make a change, yeah. there is a resistance to change. Definitely. But remember, as I mentioned before, doer or doing things, it really uh, answer all these rumors and so on. And I believe it was few years ago the resistance was so high yeah. now it slowed down because we for the egyptian people they see it in reality they see mm -hmm. it uh, in reality they see a lot of advances in terms of uh, infrastructure uh, in terms of education in terms of health care uh, remember with the covid 19 effect worldwide it doesn't affect egypt it affects worldwide as mm -hmm. all financial indicator worldwide yeah. shows egypt in the positive side and remember, in Europe, they're running for a slow economy right now, yeah. even in the States, in Canada, and so on. But now we are in the positive side, Egypt, in the positive side, we have a reserve in terms of uh, foreign currency. It covers us for years to come. That is a good news. And yeah. that is a strong uh, planning, a strong management, a strong leadership. It really uh, it paid off for not have a negative effect for COVID-19 for the Egyptian economy. Okay. Uh, and that is very important. Uh, always, we always talk about economy. No, we talk about uh, political stability is very yeah, important definitely. for the growth of Egypt in the uh, next year. And people will see this result. Of course, this change, it doesn't come overnight. It definitely. takes some time and over for all people, all Egyptian people feel the effect for what we are doing in terms of planning. However, what happened in this very short period is a miracle by all means. You know, like of course with the, with the hard work and all that and um, the, the right management. We were talking before about management that always, you know, the problem is in management. We should be managing right. Management is the most important thing. But here Absolutely. we are right now, you know, even managing um, a crisis like this pandemic that is affecting everybody in all the economies worldwide and yet uh, um, the Egyptian economy is doing well and expected and not you know our talk but this is you know the talk of uh, monetary institutions that are even expecting um, a boost in that for the year Absolutely. 2021 which is you know, like uh, um, you know I'm talking about the evil eye you know like God forbid you know with the evil eye but you know it's doing well, which is really a, a miracle by all means. Definitely. It is not only the government responsibility. It, we are in, in this all together. Yeah. Uh, uh, and the private sector, we don't forget the private sector definitely. in Egypt. It, it, it should be hand on hand with the government in order to boost our, our economy. Uh, mm -hmm. Remember, there is a, a new vision for Egypt, made in Egypt, made in Egypt with all product. It should be made in Egypt and we should be able to export our uh, product to the world. And remember, there is a new report for World Bank where it shows Egypt in the next few years, in the next year and the year after, it will be one of the 10 of 10 countries worldwide. It will be in a gross rate and will be a not less developed country, will be a developing uh, country in the future and that is a good news that is a plus yeah now director asks you know is there big hope you know in that excuse me <laughs> is there you know great hope in that uh, to be you know, like on the forefront absolutely absolutely I, I, well I, yeah I, definitely i, I just mentioned told that you. a couple of years ago mm -hmm. and nobody believed it mm -hmm. and because there is an indicator uh, the the international indicator of modis and Fitch and uh, imf world bank uh, european uh, uh, bank for development they don't issue a report or indicator just like for, that, for the sake of you or for Egypt. They don't favor any country. That is a real indicator. We are not about talking about uh, Egyptian indicator. We are talking about world indicator, uh, international indicator, which shows Egypt in the right track in terms of, of development, in terms of economy, in terms of stability, and so on. And remember, uh, President Sisi, he does not forget 
the culture and the Egyptian culture. Yeah. The, uh, the value of Egyptian people. He tried to bring us to our uh, culture, to our value system, yeah. in order to be respected worldwide. Uh, the Egyptian citizenship is highly respected worldwide now. We should be proud of it, right? Definitely, now. definitely. It's like um, what we should be, as you said, people forget. You know, so people forgot lots of things. There were outages, you know, that uh, they're forgetting. Well, you know, with the indicators of the macroeconomic indicators, people think, you know, like right away when you talk about that, that they'll have, you know, millions. Each one have, will have millions and will just, you know, like a uh, uh, mountain, you know, like a uh, big bounty. It's not that. It's like it takes a lot of work and it things like now, you know, like a lot of, of initiatives to renew things, a lot of initiatives to help the poor ones to buy. Um, their food and other things, you know, like, uh, you know, cheaper prices, you know, so if, you know, like uh, we talk about macro uh, economy, well, of course, you know, the, the um, uh, financial institutions are venting and are praising that for the microeconomics and the government is helping, especially in these hard times, people, for, for people forget there are very hard times that uh, all the world economies are reeling under. So um, they just, you know, think, well, you know, in a matter of, you know, like a, a glimpse of an eye, they'll just be rich like that. It needs a lot of work. And, you know, we, we didn't have, we had problems, you know, last year, so, you know, when we had the recessions and all that. Now, you know, things are different. You know, like, also, you know, also the mentality, the mentality frame, has been changing as you said be, people just you know prefer to buy always said i got this from abroad i got this from abroad whatever it is right now it's like you know when we buy egyptian products and they are very high level and they are just appreciated and they are just uh, brands that are just bought you know that bought by superstars abroad and they're just you know big uh, big names people are very proud of this and really uh, there are we have lots of uh, new um, uh, designers Egyptian designers uh, producers of different um, you know like they they do a lot of work in different in the fashion industry in different domains um, in the line and all that and they want to just uh, um, you know get the, the the glory of Egyptian cotton back again on track because we do have we we, we do have that um, um, we have an edge in this. So this is, you know, really, uh, really great. And it's all being developed at the same time. Uh, that is the idea. The idea is we have a competitive edge yeah. in, in our resources, yes. uh, in our location, in our people. Uh, remember, a uh, few years ago, four years ago, they established uh, a, high, a high level training uh, for all Egyptians uh, to have uh, a position in a higher level and so yeah. on. Yeah. So investing in people, it was one of the major issue in the bad mind of President Sisi, yeah. where he have to uh, create a new Egyptian personality uh, in order to which, you know, that is always you know, like uh, eating up any development. The, this is, you know, the, the growth of, you know, the population, the very high growth of the population. If we talked about the change of the mind frame uh, in different, in using local, uh, being proud of local uh, uh, work and productions and, you know, people just taking pride in that and owning Egyptian uh, made in Egypt, uh, like in made with love in Egypt is, is really wonderful. But also, whatever we are realizing, of gains done with the increase the, of the population, the rapid increase of the population, this is eating up any increase in that which is really a problem, a big problem. Uh, remember, uh, we used to have before, you know, years ago, yeah. uh, to focus in certain area in Egypt, certain yeah. part of Egypt. Uh, I will tell you one example. Uh, in Dumyat, for example, they have zero unemployment. Mm. Uh, and that is classified uh, recently, Dumyat, as one of the highest ranking city worldwide in terms yeah. of zero unemployment. This the is amazing. Zero. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. With the all people working. And the direction of President Sisi not investing in Cairo or Alexandria or in Giza, no. I was in Upper Egypt uh, yeah. last week and in, in, in Kenya, for example, uh, they started to have new industrial area in Mansoura, in all different uh, governments in Egypt. Uh, there is a direction for uh, investing in people in order to reduce the unemployment rate. Uh, thanks God, even so, 
with COVID-19 negative effect worldwide, where all, uh, for example, uh, millions, hundreds of million unemployed in, 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 in big countries like the States, for example. Yes, yes. Uh, we have over 25 million. They filed for uh, social security and an unemployment uh, benefit and so on. In Egypt, we don't have that. Uh, remember, we are united together. I am counting in Egyptian people in, the, in this uh, period of time and in the future. And remember, uh, when President Sisi years ago asked the Egyptian people to invest yeah. in, in Swiss Canal, it never happened before. In right away, they just got, got, the, got the money a week, needed. We made about 60 billion yes. uh, Egyptian pound. Yeah. And that is the leadership. Yeah. Uh, leadership, it means you have to merge a private sector with public sector in order to move ahead in the future. Definitely. Well, we go for a short break after she be coming back. Stay tuned to us. Don't go away. We're back again to my new business with Dr. Zayed Khouli and uh, well, also uh, talking, well, completing, as we are just talking about the, how things are different. Well, the countryside has always been the soft spot and uh, uh, the peasant hasn't been meeting really justice. Um, you know, every uh, development takes place uh, anywhere else in the big cities, but not in the countryside. But right now, it's, uh, you know, dignified life and other uh, um, initiatives are uniting together in order to develop the countryside totally, all the, the countryside and the villages of Egypt. Uh, uh, as I, as I the mentioned, less fortunate ones, yeah. before we go to commercial, uh, the focus is not concentrating in, in certain governments and leaving the other government. Yeah. Uh, the direction now for all, for our Egypt, for all different uh, governments in Egypt, and to improve the lifestyle of villages is very important. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this is a good resource for agriculture in order to have a high productivity rate for Egyptian in, in terms of agriculture, you have to improve the uh, lifestyle of these people. And they started to work hard with uh, uh, new infrastructure for this village and so on, uh, new mapping for all governments and so on in order to uh, balance between uh, uh, different governments and so on. Uh, and, and that is uh, the planning or if you take a look and if the people take a look for uh, Egypt Vision 2030, yeah. it's already planned uh, years ago and is started to act right now. Uh, all I can say, we should keep hope alive. We are moving on the right track you will see the fruits of this planning. It will come in next year or the year after, but we have to be patient. 
-hmm. and we have to stand with our leadership in order to enhance our economic sector in our educational sector and our healthcare sector the more stability we have the more growth we'll have in the future mm -hmm. and all egyptian people will benefit from this growth in a, in a later stage it doesn't come overnight definitely we have less than two minutes but then also the efforts of uh, the, the different bridges and and, and modernizing places like Anisira, uh, the aqueduct uh, and uh, of course uh, the Sidi Aisha uh, um, uh, bridge and this this area all you know has to be uh, you know is they are just changing uh, you know every every the the, the bad uh, areas into uh, different areas, better ones, and, and um, um, attractions for all tourists of everybody. We have a facelift for Egypt right now. We yes. have a facelift for Egypt, all Egypt, not only Cairo, but I was in, in Ghana, for example, last week, and uh, it was a very clean streets, no a piece of paper throw in the street. And people start to work with the government, with the leadership of yeah. Egypt, in order to attract and remember, the tourism, it will come to Egypt. Definitely. Uh, Egypt, well, with, for the good times. our city, the smell of our old city, it has a smell. And the tourists like this smell. Well, thank you very much for being with us. You're Time is welcome. up and good times fly very fast. Absolutely. So. <laughs> thank you for being there. I'd like to thank everybody for being there. And uh, as we all end, uh, God bless Egypt. God bless Egyptians. God bless our president, our army, our white army in those hard times of COVID-19 and our police and as we quote from the holy quran and from the holy bible mubarak shabi mesr bless be egypt my people i'm nermin azim signing off we'll see you again next week goodbye for now